Hi again guys and welcome to another Forza Horizon 3 speed build and this time we've got an extremely fast car for you guys. This, as far as I've seen so far, would appear to be the second quickest car in the game. I'm not sure if there is perhaps a vehicle that can surpass it. Some of you guys may know of one. I haven't bought all the cars yet so I can't say. And it's the Bugatti EB110 Supersport. Now this particular vehicle, whenever you can fit it with the Veyron engine, is always one of the quickest cars on Forza. On some of the Forza games, you can't fit the Veyron Supersport engine, and when you can't fit it, it's no way near as good. Thankfully, on Horizon 3, you can fit that monstrous engine, and when you combine that huge power and torque in a package that's significantly lighter than the Veyron, well, you're pretty much guaranteed to have crazy performance. Now, of course, as you could see, I would recommend having that engine. I would also recommend keeping all-wheel drive. You could remove it if you fancy a challenge, but you don't really need to remove it. It doesn't improve its straight-line performance. And as far as the rest, just improve the power, lower the weight, fit everything with race in the title, as I would usually recommend. Now, incidentally, as you can see, this tune is for the X-Class, but... I have both this and an S2 class tune, which is actually exactly the same in terms of performance on my storefront. So just use the keywords in the video description if you want to find those to fit them quickly and easily to your EB110. If you want to do it yourself, obviously you'll have to jiggle some stuff around, take off a couple of parts here or there to allow it to drop down that one point into the S2 class. Now, with that being said, the benchmark is incredible for this car in terms of top end speed. It says 281, I've actually had it to 282, so it's comfortably quicker than pretty much any other supercar in the game. The acceleration, not so much, it's certainly nowhere near the quickest as far as that goes, but the top end acceleration is very good, and that is where, if you get the chance to use it, it will leave most of its rivals in the dust. Now for the gearbox, I would recommend a final drive of 2.4, then for the individual gears, it's actually a pretty simple setup that I've gone for. 2.9 for first, then 1.99, 1 1.5, 1 1.18, 0.94 and 0.76. Then for the alignment, as I usually would, we've got neutral camber and toe. I've opted for 4 degrees of caster. You might want to go lower, to be honest, on this car, maybe down to 3 or even down to 1 if you want to, to increase that maneuverability. It certainly does have the heaviness there that you'd expect from something with Veyron tech under the body. But as I said, it's down to you, obviously. For anti-roll, we've just rounded those off to 26 and 49. Springs on 134 and 201 with the lowest ride height. For dampers, I've got those on 12, 17, 5 and 8. Aero, you want as low as possible on the back because thankfully you can adjust that. And, and then for the diff, 100% on acceleration, zero on decel, and then a 70% split for this particular car in favour of that back end. Now for a vehicle like this, you could go even further back if you want to. You could go to 75 or even 80 without losing too much of that all-wheel drive advantage, but at the same time increasing its manoeuvrability. So it's down to you. It depends what you want and what you need from the car. Personally, I like the way this car performs, but obviously that's not going to work the same for everyone. So as I said... Two different versions of it are on my storefront, but now let's actually take it out on the street to watch it in action. Now, as I mentioned just now, the low-end acceleration on this car isn't bad, certainly not, but it's not overly remarkable. There are certainly plenty of supercars that can out-launch it, but if you have that longer road opportunity, there's barely anything that can keep up with this car. 282 miles per hour is insanely quick, and even in this replay you can see it just nudging up around 283 even. So you can definitely get it even higher if there's less traffic, if the road's long enough, and of course, if you could get in behind something like another EB110 or a Jag D-Type, you could quite easily get it even higher than that. So if you do decide to use this tune, I hope of course you have a lot of fun with it, and there are plenty more like this to check out on the channel. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. 